Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, this is my monthly video chat where I sit down and talk to the best and brightest of the Boston perinatal community. And uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Angela Bell. I'm an acupuncturist and I specialize in fertility and pregnancy in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Today, I am very excited to be here with Julie Brill of Well Pregnancy. She is a doula, a childbirth educator. She trains doulas and she trains doula, uh, childbirth educators. Um, and she's just an all around amazing, wonderful resource for um, birth in our community that we have to take advantage of. So, um, hi, Julie. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Angie. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm so glad to be able to talk to you. This is going to be so fun. Um, and I have so many things to ask you about, but I think that it makes sense to first talk to you about um, your book, which is called Round the Circle, um, which I think you said people can get on Amazon, yeah? Yes, yep, it's on Amazon Prime. Um, that's awesome. So um, I just wanted to ask you kind of what's, what's the story? How did you come to write the book? Um, you know, who, who is it meant to serve? Yeah, so um, the book is an anthology. I wrote it with 22 other doulas, and I had the idea for it a couple of years ago at the CAPA conference. My thought was, like, people come together for these conferences, and it's so exciting, and the energy is so warm and wonderful, and then everybody goes home. Yeah. So I'm really looking for a way to keep that energy, um, and I started thinking about how to do that in a book form. And I happened to meet the keynote speaker who had written a book. Um, so we started talking and then I was meeting people who I wanted to put in the book. Yeah. Uh, so it really just all kind of came together. And then I, I came home, I had the idea for the title, um, just thinking about a group of women sitting around a circle, sharing information. It's it. the way I teach my childbirth classes. It's the way I learned when we're free, you know, it's like everybody kind of on equal footing. And I started sending emails out to great doulas that I knew, hey, I'm trying to write this book, you want to yeah. be part of it? And many of them said yes. I bet. So really everybody wrote the chapter that was the thing that they are most passionate about or know the most about. Um, and I really feel like it, it all came together. It's really like a mentorship in a book. What would you want if you were a new doula starting out mm -hmm. or a doula who's been around for a while who wants to know more? about something from an expert. So mm -hmm. like Tara Campbell, who's uh, the local expert on family-centered cesareans, she wrote the chapter on that. You know, and I read and her chapter her last night. Yeah. It was really great. <laughs> yeah. So just kind of everybody got to write the thing that they most wanted to do. Um, and I actually wrote a chapter about marketing and publicity because that's one of my passions. Yeah. You know, I always think you can be the best doula in the world, the best childbirth educator in the world, but if nobody knows who you are, it almost doesn't matter. Exactly. So yeah. about thinking about that other part of your brain, that other skill set that is publicity and marketing that maybe we're not as comfortable with as the loving doula work part. Exactly. And I think we forget to, to think about that part as we're entering um, these kind of professions, like acupuncture is the same as well. There are um, a lot of amazing acupuncturists, but they also have to be amazing business owners to be able to tell people that they offer these services. So um, exactly. I think it's an important message for them. Exactly. It's like yeah. laundry. You're just never done with it. You no, know? <laughs> no. You and I know that. Yeah. Yeah. No, never done. But that's fantastic. Well, I'm glad to have it. And I did read Tara's um, section last night, and I, I look forward to reading others in it. So yeah. I'm glad you did this for us. Think about it. <laughs> so the other thing um, that I was looking at in preparation for our call um, is your website, which uh, I think is just so well written and has such a huge amount of information for people. And um, just kudos to you for doing it because it it's it just it's so easy to understand, and you've you've gotten some messages across in a a very um, I don't know how to say this. But it's just like a comfortable, easy way to get message across because sometimes. Um, that communicating stuff about birth is a little bit tricky because we don't want our whole goal is to support women in this process and not um, not make them fearful and yet we have to educate them about some really important things that they might encounter during birth so I just think you did a great job so I encourage people to go look at that Thank you. Um, 
But on it, you talk uh, about, I think, I don't know if it was a blog post or what, but you talk about the term natural childbirth. So can you tell us um, kind of what, it, what, do you, what does that term mean? How can we kind of get our hands around that term and why is it important um, to kind of understand that term? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the term actually comes from Grantly Dick Reed in the 40s. That's his word. Um, and we're kind of stuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, some people say physiological birth, which maybe is more accurate. Um, and I think, I think natural childbirth is really open to interpretation in terms of what that means. I've asked my natural childbirth classes that, and the answers are really interesting. Um, a lot of times they'll say, if it's not an epidural, it's natural childbirth. Mm -hmm. I just taught a class recently, and one of the students was talking about her midwife um, encouraging her to try nitrous oxide in labor and saying it's still natural childbirth if you do nitrous oxide. You know, it's not cheating, whatever that means. I don't know how you <laughs> cheat when you're having a baby, but right. um, <laughs> so you know, it's a really interesting question, and I don't, I don't think there is an answer. I think maybe part of the process of being pregnant and getting ready for your birth is thinking about what does it mean yeah. for you, right? Um, you know, and what are the parameters? Yeah. It's important. I think so many women um, are kind of charging forward in their pregnancies, not giving a whole ton of thought about what they want everything to look like. So I, I agree, a super important thing to, to just investigate in oneself leading right. up to birth. Um, and so I think the question, the biggest question when we're talking about natural childbirth is, um, well, what, what does that mean to you in preparation for birth? But also how can women prepare for a natural childbirth? And right. I, I think so many of your services really speak to that issue, so I'm wondering if you can kind of talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, I think about that question a lot. You know, yeah. um, you have, well, you feel like you have nine months. I mean, hopefully you have more if you're preparing before you even conceive, yep. you know, laying the groundwork with nutrition and just good health in general, exercise. You must see moms for acupuncture before they even start trying to conceive. Absolutely, I do. Yeah, so that, great. that groundwork. And then, you know, when they're pregnant, really thinking about how would I treat myself if I were a small child? I would put myself to bed early. Yeah. I would eat nutritious foods. I would take a nap if I were cranky. Yes. Um, you know, I would try to keep my stress level down. I wouldn't watch scary TV shows. I mean, you know, kind of just those basic things. Mm. Um a lot of times I'll ha encourage moms when they're pregnant and they're thinking about birth to watch animal videos. There's tons on YouTube of animals giving birth. Um, and, you know, just it's another day. There's the deer lying at the side of the road, you know, and there's the baby. Right. <laughs> um, and then the other really helpful thing, I think, is to watch, I don't know what the current movie would be, like those Rocky kind of movies. Like yeah. Like, you can do it, you know. Yeah. It's painful. It's hard, you're tired, you train for it, and you do it. Right. I watched this video this weekend. It was called um, Finding Traction. It's on Netflix, and mm. it's this woman who runs the long trail. It's the length of Vermont. Mm. She runs four days, like, on very little sleep. Oh, um, and if you watch that, you're like, I could have a baby. You know, this woman just ran the long trail, and she does it by preparing, by having a lot of good support, by eating a lot. You know, she's got her friends there helping her, making her rest at the beginning, pushing her forward at the end. It's, it's a lot like birth. Mm -hmm. um, so those kind of images, I think, are really good. Um, and then thinking about who's going to be at your birth and where it's going to be um, mm -hmm. and looking at statistics. You know, if you go to a place where the epidural rate is 85%, you might not have an epidural, but 85% of the time they're working with women who do. Right. So it's going to be different right. than it would be in a birth center or at home, you know, working with midwives who really understand natural birth. Yeah. I have so many, I have like 50 question, back, like, <laughs> questions that I want to ask you and try and put them in order, but um, yeah, I, I know we're going to talk about childbirth education classes later, but I do think it's an important um, piece of what plays into creating a natural birth if that's what you're hoping for. And um I, one thing I'd love to ask you the about is the kind of the difference between hospital-based childbirth classes and maybe more private, privately taught classes. So not necessarily private like one-on-ones, but um, like practitioners like yourself or educators, childbirth educators like yourself. And I know there are 
a lot of childbirth educators in the Boston area who offer amazing different choices when it comes to childbirth education. But I do think that it's important to kind of note the difference between what you might get at a hospital and what you might get in a more private, no matter what the, um, like if it's Bradley method or if it's hypnobirthing or if it's any other technique. Do you have a strong feeling about the difference that people um, might get? I do. I do. I mean, <laughs> I agree that it doesn't have to be private, but I think the word is independent. Independent, you know, thank you. have an instructor who's not working for a hospital. Yes. Um, there are a lot of great instructors who work at hospitals. I've trained a lot of great instructors who teach at hospitals. Yeah. Um, but when you work at a hospital, you have a curriculum often, um, and there's often things that get left unsaid. Yeah. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is it's you're in a class on how to be a good patient. How to be a and good patient. And then you patient. come in, and then you'll lie down, and then you'll put the gown on, and then we'll put the monitor on, and then, you know, right. that kind of class. Right. So um, when you take an independent class, first of all, as independent instructors, we don't survive if we're not good. Yeah. <laughs> we're not getting a paycheck. So um, if we've been around for a while, we are good. And um, really, we're able to say it how it is, and we know what's happening in different places and different hospitals, what's happening yeah. in the birth centers, what's happening with the home birth midwifery practices, because right. it's not all the same. Right. And a lot of times if you're a nurse in a hospital teaching a childbirth class, you really only know the culture of your particular right. hospital. Like that hospital does it this way. Exactly. But you're not and it necessarily... might be different up the street. Right. Yeah. I always feel like, I, I think you and I, um, for everyone in the audience, I took my doula training um, with Julie, so we had an opportunity to talk about some of this stuff before. But um, I think one of the things that we talked about was giving women choice um, in in birth and pregnancy. And um, I think that's one of the biggest things for me that I like to see women be able to get is is education around the different choices so that when they get to hospital or wherever they're going to be birthing, birth center, maybe even at home, they know that, like, all the tables are out on the card. Like, what what are the different things that I could choose, and what are the pros and cons of that? And if you can get to know some of those things in advance, then you're not making this kind of scary, or what could potentially be scary, split decision, um, split-second decision at a time when, you don't have any time to do research, and you're in a very intense emotional environment. Right. That whole informed consent piece is huge. Yeah. Um, and when the, we ask moms afterwards about their birth experiences, that part of it where they had options and they chose what they wanted yeah. and chose what they didn't want is the most important thing for birth satisfaction. They do that listening to mothers study every year, and it's, you know, it's scientifically shown that's what's the most important thing afterwards yeah so if you know your options ahead of time and you know how to get informed consent you're so much ahead of the game when you're actually there in labor and things are happening yeah so can you tell us just for everybody who's listening you know like what what do you mean when you say informed consent and why is that such a big deal in the birth community yeah um so i think a lot of times you know if you're working with a particular provider a midwife or an ob um, and they're making suggestions, it often feels to people like that's the thing that they should do. And we are vulnerable when we're in labor and we are trained from when we're small children to do what authority figures tell us to do. Yeah. And so I think there's often a feeling in labor like, oh, I should just do what the doctor says. Um, and they say that obstetrics is actually the least evidence-based form of medicine. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's an art, not a science. So this doctor is saying something but on the next shift, a doctor might say something different based on different experience or training or whatever. And so just knowing that there are options, being able to ask what the risks and benefits are for a procedure and what the alternatives are, you know, so now there's a, a plan B that you might do. Maybe you still do plan A, but you chose right. it. Right. So it's different. And at least you know what plan B is. Exactly. And you can decide, do you want to do plan A or do you want to do plan B? Right. Because yeah. your birth is a story you'll remember forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's important. Cool. Thanks for talking about that. Um, I think one of the other things that your website, that I saw on your website when I was looking over it, was this quote by um, Joyce Maynard that I says, love that quote. I, this, I loved this quote when I read it. And I was like, I haven't had babies, but I felt like 
this is going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, the quote is, um, before I had children, I always wondered whether their births would be, for me, like the ultimate in gym, in gym class failures. And I discovered instead that I'd finally found my sport. Um, I, I just... I, when I read that, I was like, mm-hmm, yep, yeah. just so yeah. awesome. So tell me yeah. a little bit about why you love that quote and how come it is up on your website. Yeah, so I just got chills when you read I it. And I, I, you know, I love I it. I myself, I love it. I think that, um, you know, that idea that our bodies are built for this and you don't have to be a jock and it doesn't really matter what else you've done with your body, you can really discover in birth what your body is capable of. Yeah. Um, and... It's such a positive focus. I remember hearing Ina Mae Gaskin at a Kappa conference years ago, and she was talking about Mary Lou Retton, the mm. Olympic gymnast. Yeah. And uh, she had had some interview and she, when she was pregnant, and they asked her, you know, are you going to have natural childbirth, Mary Lou? And she said, I'm going to try, you know. <laughs> are you going to, you know, win an Olympic gold, Mary Lou? You know, she's never like, I'm going to try. Like, <laughs> and that's what's stolen from women. So you have this Olympic athlete who lives with pain and trains in pain and, you know, sets goals and then – somehow is undermined by the culture when she's pregnant, you know? Even though she has the ultimate confidence of her a body's ability. Exactly, and she's, you know, in amazing shape and is, you know, you know such a high-level athlete. So that quote is the opposite of Mary Lou Breton saying, I'm going to try, you know? Yeah. It's, wow, I did this thing. Who would have thought, even though I was really bad at volleyball and, you know, badminton or whatever you do in gym. Right. Yeah, I love it so much. Um, okay, I want to... Again, like, I could talk to you about this stuff forever, but I do want to talk a little bit about um, the actual services that you offer folks because um, I think they're super important and really, really valuable. I, I know, um, so the next one I'm going to talk about is that you offer um, private, a private program for folks who know that they're going to have a cesarean section for any number of different reasons. Oftentimes women just know in advance that they're going to have a planned and scheduled cesarean section. Um, and there is a program that you offer to really help women prepare for it um, emotionally and otherwise, which I just think is an, an enormous gift. So can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to offer this program and then um, what, is it, what does it look like for folks? Right. So um, the program is called Prepare, Prepare for Cesarean Birth, Heal Faster. Mm -hmm. And it's based on Peggy Huddleston's work. She created a program of relaxations called Prepare for Surgery, Heal Faster. Yeah. Um, and she was able to show that when people did her program before the surgery, they healed faster, they used less pain medication, there were less hospital uh, readmits, uh, they went home sooner. And uh, so I really wanted to be able to bring that specifically to moms who knew that they were going to be having cesareans because they always felt like such a underserved population, you know. Yeah. Um, they're usually not going to childbirth classes. They're usually uh, not as much focused on what that day when the baby's going to be born is going to look like. Right. Um, and often there's a lot of fear around it. And often they're moms who are high risk, so they have a lot of other stressful things going on as well. Um, and so this program was a way to uh, bring the stress level down for them prenatally, and we know um, how good that is for mothers and babies when they can lower the stress level and s sleep better and yeah. um, all of that, and that. Um, then be able to recover faster afterwards. So it's a one-hour phone session we do. Um, if the mom has a partner and they want to join us, that's great. Um, and it's taking Peggy's work. Uh, which is a relaxation script, and tailoring it specifically to them. Um, we do it together, and then they have the recorded um, session to listen to afterwards, ideally twice a day. So at least 20 minutes twice a day, they're taking a break from whatever else is going on. The baby gets a break, um, and then they can actually um, work on relaxation. And, you know, I've had moms go, they've got it on their iPhone, they've got the earbuds in, they're listening. Cause when you go for a cesarean, you're waiting around, yeah. on, oh, you know, over and over again that day while they're waiting. Right. Uh, and I've had dad say, well, I never even thought this was for me, but well, I just want to keep doing this. Cause yeah. you get into that practice. You feel great. That's so um, fantastic. Yeah. And I, I think it just to piggyback on that, I mean, I, refer people to you for that program all the time because I, I work with a lot of women who have um, babies are breech. 
Right. And um, obviously, when they come to me, our goal is to turn the baby. Right. And so we do that. But, you know, we ha- I have a whole program for that, which is fantastic. Um, but there are just plain old some cases, maybe they don't find out the baby is breech until um, much later in their pregnancy, 38 plus weeks, or or maybe they genuinely do, you know, what we can possibly do to get the baby um, or to enable the baby to turn and then just that the baby just doesn't turn. Um, yeah. And so in that case, the vast majority of the time, um, women are going to be scheduled for cesarean sections. And I feel like it, it is an opportunity for them to learn about cesarean um, and, and again, educate themselves on what the choices are. So um, I will send them to you so that uh, they can get a, a good head start on getting themselves prepared for, like you said, which what is still a very important day in their lives and in the lives of their babies. Exactly. And, you know, cesarean moms have options, too, more and more all the time in yeah. terms of being able to have the babies with them afterwards, in terms yeah. of, you know, having more support people in the OR if they want, having music played. You know, this whole family-centered cesarean movement is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and do you talk to them about family-centered um, cesareans? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the hospitals are doing them, and the ones locally that aren't, they will be. They just don't yeah. know it yet, you know, because parents are asking for it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I wanted to ask you that. So, um, well, before I ask you, can you just take a minute to tell us what, you know, you and I know what family-centered cesarean looks like, but can you just tell people a little bit about what that means? Yeah, so it, maybe it's like natural childbirth, right? It means different things to yeah. different people. Yeah, yeah. But it's the idea that, yes, the cesarean birth is major abdominal surgery, but it's also the baby being born. Yeah. And so how can we make that... Um, more like a vaginal birth. It's never going to be a vaginal birth, but how can we make it more similar? Mm -hmm. Um, And the most important thing usually for moms is that skin-to-skin time with the baby in the OR, Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, with your families where the babies are breached and there's no other concerns, you know, usually they can go skin-to-skin immediately. And there's time ahead of time that the parents and the doctors can be planning for that. Um, and that's what the moms remember afterwards. You know, mm-hmm. I had that baby right there in the OR because mm-hmm. most of the time it's after the birth of the baby, it's the repair of the incisions. Um, and if the baby can be skin to skin with the mom, um, and if not with her for some reason, then with the partner, you know, you don't want the baby in the bassinet bonding with the bassinet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, I love that. And I and do you feel like there are more and more hospitals in the Boston area that are really, um, supportive of women who are asking for these sorts of things? Definitely. And some of it is hospital-based and some of it is consumer-based, especially with these families where they're planning their cesareans and they have time ahead of time to be making plans and asking questions and they can switch providers if that's what they need to do to get what they want. Um, And the hospitals are responding and providing those services. So we just need to keep asking for it. Yeah, (laughs) but, you know, you have to know what to ask for. Right. So that's where the prenatal education comes in. Exactly, which is why I send folks to you. I'm so glad that they have you as a resource. Um, okay, what else did I want to ask about? So I we did, um, I know we're going like totally over our, what we allotted for our time, but I do want to... I got no place else to be. I'm happy to talk to um, I just wanted to ask you, and I know we touched about it on um, a little bit before, but um, you teach... Uh, you train doulas and you train childbirth education um, instructors, but you also teach childbirth education um, to expecting moms, right? Yes. So um, in in my practice, I see a lot of pregnant women, and um, I do a lot of prep for them leading up to birth. Um, but I also, because I do so much work in fertility, I have um, the the benefit of being able to see them very very early on in their pregnancies, and so I get to say like, so <laughs> would you like to consider a childbirth education class or a doula or um, lactation classes and that sorts of thing? And I I just think that they are invaluable to people um, leading up to birth. Can you tell us a little bit more about the childbirth classes that you offer? I know some of them are individual. Um, and just tell us kind of why again, or, or expand on why you think they're so important for women. Yeah. Yeah. So your families are so lucky to have you all the way along. (laughs) (laughs) 
kind of well, guide thank you. you know, so many people, you know, they really get to the third trimester and that's when they start thinking about childbirth classes and really start thinking about the birth because they've been just thinking about the pregnancy all along. And you do right. kind of have to do that first. Yeah. You know? So some guidance, like what you do is, is really great. Um, the classes that I teach are usually private classes mm-hmm. uh, for the family. Um, and if the mom is bringing, you know, her sister or her mother or whatever, they're welcome to come to the class as well. Um, they're typically three hours. And I just think about really filling that family's toolkit with tools for labor. Yeah. So you want to have something to try. And then if that doesn't work, something else to try. And then a third thing. And maybe you never get to everything because the baby comes. Um, that's the best. So we do lots of hands-on practice. We get out the birth ball and the peanut ball, um, different positions, massage, counter pressure, hot and cold, breathing, you know, really teaching the support people how to be thinking ahead. So the mom, she's just in the moment doing that contraction, but what can the partner be doing to think, okay, what, if this stops working, what might we do next, you know, and then plan B. So plan A is stupid, you know, she can be like, I'm not getting in the shower, but I will walk around or whatever. (laughs) Um, So lots of tools, um, a really good review of the natural birth process Mm -hmm. and then informed consent and interventions. Yeah. Um, So that they really feel like, okay, we've, we've got what we know. We know we need to do this and, and we've got it. Yep. Uh, and then hopefully they're practicing that on their own as well. Yep. Uh, but it's fun. You know, we really can do exactly what that family needs, answer their questions, talk about their situation. We don't have to talk about anything that's not relevant to them. Yeah, I love it so much. And it's, I just think it's a, a very accessible um, offering that you have because um, not everybody's going to do a multi-week or a weekend long course. Not that I don't think they're valuable. I think they're amazing. And um, we have a lot of those in this area, but not not around everybody is going to be able to do that. And not everybody wants to do that. So I think this is uh, a really important option. It's have. worked really well for people who are, you know, either coming in last minute, looking for a weekday class, yeah. or private, don't necessarily, you know, you think about the intended curriculum in a childbirth class, sometimes there's that unintended curriculum, pick up other people's fears and yeah. concerns and stuff, don't want to hear other people's stuff, just want to come in and get what they need. Yeah, and maybe feel more comfortable to ask their the questions that they have, and they might not want to do that in a group setting. So Exactly. Yeah, well, I love that. Um, and then my final question for you is, um, so many people ask me this question and you gave, in our doula training, you gave us a really great list of books, but do you have any like favorites that you, it's like a no brainer if someone asks you what kind of, you know, is there a good book that I can read during pregnancy? Do you have any, any favorites that you recommend? Yeah, um, I have a lot, but um, <laughs> I bet. So yeah. one book, I really like the Ricky Lake book, Your yeah. Best Birth. Uh-huh. I think, like in terms of the curriculum that I teach, what's most closely matched, it's her book. I think that's a really good one. Um, and then if you were going to read two, Ina May's Guide to Natural Chabra is good. Yeah. Um, the Lilechi Lee Womanly Art of Breastfeeding is a great book. Sweet Sleep, which is the new Lilechi Lee book. I know you said one. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I feel that <laughs> same way. <Yeah. laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, tell me, so your pregnancy, I think is, I mean, your, your pregnancy, your website is um, wellpregnancy.com? Yes. Okay. And what's the best pe- way that people have to reach you? Um, so you can reach me through the site. Um, okay. My email is julie at wellpregnancy.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I just had such a blast with you, and I know that we could go on and on, but um, I've now I've doubled my time with you, and <laughs> I'll let you go. But have a lovely afternoon, and um, thanks so much for all that you do. Yeah, thank you, Angie. I really appreciate it. This was fun. This was fun. Thanks, Julie. Bye.